All right, the first menu item we'll really start looking at is the options menu. The options menu uh, almost fills the screen with various items. The first section, the top section of the menu, is what you would term system configuration options. This determines whether you'd like to see everything in metric units. You know, if I click metric units, we're going to change the range to be meters, speed did default to meters per second. Uh, for the wind and the moving target leads. Uh, temperature over here on the presets page will change to uh, Celsius temperatures, will change to hectopascals for pressure, um, and basically all of the measurement items will change to their metric equivalents. There's another option here. Some of us work in English measurements, but range in meters. Well, if we set range in meters on and metric units off, we'll change to be reading miles per hour, for example, for speed, but we can change the range only to be meters. For some people that's convenient, they may have a range finder that's fixed to meters um, or may just operate in meters as a norm. So that's an option for you. Then we have a choice in the telescope units of measure. Our angular units can be either minute of angle or in mil. Uh, if I switch to mil, it'll automatically convert the value that's in the box, anything that's in any of the boxes when you change a measurement will be automatically converted to the other equivalent measurement. So instead of the 20 odd minutes up, we need 6.6 .6 mil. The next item on the list is a configuration item to give you the net hold value. I, for one, generally speaking, do not dial a windage value on the telescope. I hold for wind and lead as required. Um, only occasionally will we dial wind on the scope. Um, so I use this pretty much all the time. When I click net hold, it's basically going to set the windage box to give me the actual hold value. So we'll re-input that uh, 10 miles an hour from 270, right? which will give me 1.7. And you'll see the hold box will convert to the same number. And now let's put that 5 miles an hour in from 90 degrees. And the actual physical hold required is going to show here in the net uh, hold box rather than having to dial something on and then hold something, you get one single net value, right? And the button above it will be labeled net hold, which is, I think, kind of a convenience item. The next option is angle cosine. The angle defaults to degrees, so your elevation angle to the target, up-down angle to the target, is by default an entry in degrees. If you have the angle cosine indicator on your gun that's set up for the cosine value, checking this uh, option will change that uh, angle box for the shot to be the cosine of the angle. So instead of putting in uh, 90 degrees, you'll put in uh, 97 for the, uh, pardon me, the cosine 0.97. I guess would probably be better. And that will compensate for the elevation angle of your shot. The next item is for the turret display. We haven't entered a new turret yet um, with the profile, but we have the capability here of using uh, the bottom two boxes uh, in the display to display both our elevation and windage as they are displayed on the telescope's turret. Right? 
Some turrets have uh, 10 minutes per turn, some are 15 minutes per turn, or 5 mils per turn, or 15 mils per turn, 9 mils per turn, who knows. This will let you see the actual value on the knob. And in the event that the telescope is not perfectly calibrated, you'll get to see what you're actually supposed to dial on the telescope as opposed to what the knob might need to read. We'll go into that in a little bit more detail uh, in a little bit when we get to creating profiles. Right? right now, I basically ignore the turret windage because, like I said, I really never dial windage on the gun. But I am set to use positive click values. And when we set up a turret, I'll show you what happens when you change that. Questions on the basic configuration options? Anybody just hit the raise your hand button if you have a question, and Paula will stop me if it's important. Otherwise, I'll, uh, I should be able to catch you here on the screen. All right, so far, so good. The next set of items on the option menu are what are referred to as solution refinements. These are things that can be applied to the calculation to further refine the, uh, the solution, the elevation and windage solution. Some of them are important to some people and some ranges, and some of them are unimportant to everybody no matter what they do. My personal feeling is I turn all of these on uh, because if the computer is giving me the solution, why wouldn't I want it? to calculate that solution to the best of its ability. So there's an item here for spin drift, which is simply a checkable on item. We'll clear out the uh, speed, the speed and headings. So right now, Purely wind drift at 732 meters, we'll back to yards to be even numbers, is a whole 0.2 mil left. If we add in powder temperature, that just turns on the powder temperature and sets it up for temperature sensitivity. We can turn on vertical deflection. Vertical deflection deals with winds coming from either left to right or right to left. Because a bullet that is traveling through uh, the wind is always traveling a little nose up. And therefore, the wind from one direction to the other actually affects the elevation value as well as the wind hold value. Uh, if you go out far enough, um, you'll find that bullets, you know, typical right hand twist. If the wind is blowing from right to left, you'll actually gain a little elevation. Uh, and if the wind, as opposed to the wind blowing from left to right, where you'll actually lose a little elevation. So that's another option to turn on. Then we have the Coriolis and uh, Edivos uh, effect. This deals with the actual rotation of the Earth. Most of the time, we aren't shooting at a distance where the correction is particularly relevant. But if you're shooting at 1,500, 1,800, 2,000 meters, it does have an effect, uh, most particularly a windage effect, depending upon where you are on the planet. In order to turn this on, the system must know your current position. If you try and turn it on without a position, you'll see that our current latitude is not set. Um, I do have the GPS on at the moment, so if I uh, just go to the map page and set our uh, current FFP, I'll set it as the house. Right. The option will now be on and it will be correcting. Right. Uh, the magnetic variation option <clears throat> deals with how you're giving bearings 
to the target from your location? Are you giving us a true bearing or are you giving us a magnetic bearing? So if I check that on, it'll just be a direct read off of your compass to the location of your target and we will in the program compensate for the current variation and since Coriolis variation is on upper right hand corner has the CV button lit up and if I press that button it'll show you what it, our current latitude is what the bearing is to the target and what our current local magnetic variation is and it is turned on so basically it's going to take the compass bearing and correct it for you rather than you having to correct it. 